please take a seat. Our oh, microphones are not working, but I mean, we have a loud voice, that's good. Uh, and welcome back to Fresh Air. <laughs> After that, my like, uh, last day, I mean, warm weather out there. Let's see, uh, I think we have almost all of the missing one. If I see all the facilitators, then I believe that my other groups are here. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Okay, all the groups are here. That's great. So what we're going to do next is basically we have around 45 minutes time to go through the findings. Okay, so the reality is there's no way we're going to capture everything you figured out. I mean, you were discussing quite a lot. I was following the groups. That's great. There's a huge amount of washing notes in many of these places. Some people, people even needed to use walls because some of the papers were not enough. And that's great. So we are going to collect all that and then basically make a summary out of it. So that's good. But on top of that, we are rec recording this session. So as you know, so there's a video. And the thing is that the reason we are recording is to capture your findings and ideas and thoughts. That's how it's going to work. Uh, and because it's a limited amount of time, it's basically we have uh, three questions to tackle. What are the challenges in the corporate? I mean, bringing these principles, which are the good ideas and practices, and any thoughts and ideas for four them. So we're going to use around 15 minutes per column. And I hope that when you're commenting, be sharp. So a couple of words, a sentence or two, not too far much explanation. <coughs> And on top of that, no need to replace, I mean, repeat anything. So if somebody has said something, let that be. We have got that recorded. That's the idea. So let's get rolling on. So let's speak first about the challenges, because the challenges are always the easiest to speak, right? <laughs> we are always coming up with tons of ideas why things are challenging. So it's always a good starting point. Uh, so challenges in bringing purpose in corporate. Any thoughts? Good findings from groups? Culture is. Yes, please. But, um, hi. Uh, yes, that's fine. Culture is the strategy for breakfast. Okay, and, and why is this challenging for purpose? Because, uh, well, everybody knows that. Yeah. So you don't see the purpose uh, in a, in a, in a, if you first change the culture. Okay, that's right. cool. So, yeah, so the organizational culture is like a not good for purpose. So, there's basically a culture that makes sure that I mean, nobody is bringing that. It's a, it's a revenue or a march or something like that. Okay, any other thoughts? Because of the huge scale, it's hard to see in, in your own little role there. It's hard to see the whole and, and therefore, therefore connect to the bigger purpose because of the huge. Yeah. Huge scale. So the size of the organization is so big that it's hard to see what is the actually my purpose in this. Or the bigger or purpose of the our, Even our purpose in this. Right. So, uh, so it's a sh 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 the share of the organization. Share of the organization that's making it. Okay. Cool. In addition to that, it's a uh, hard to see the customer, the actual client that actually pays you the, the bill and uh, and your your uh, salary. So how to how to remove that obstacle? Okay. So you feel so the customer is so far away. Right, okay, so because of the size, the customer is so far away that you don't see the purpose. Why I'm doing something? Did I get it right? Yes. Cool. You are stuck with the status quo. So, for example, you are owning a multi brand company, which part of the brands are healthy and part of the brands are unhealthy. And when you define your purpose, you might have to set up your business to, to pursue that purpose. And, and some companies are not. Uh, willing to do such decisions that they would kill the other half. Right. So the portfolio is so big that, I mean, there's a lot of businesses and it's hard to find actually the purpose that is covering all of those. Uh, no, or? I guess that the, it's, uh, there might be tough decisions to be made uh, if they uh, choose a certain purpose. So it's a lot more easy to keep the status quo. Right. Okay. So it's, it's too tough, basically, because you sell something out or something like that so it's easier to keep yeah, it how it is cool okay so, so just to give me a second i'm running here because i want to write that one down uh, <coughs> cool kind of elaborate <coughs> those two but maybe there's not enough transparency so you don't really know the, the all the purposes within the company so, right so okay. you don't feel that it's yours there might be even the purpose somewhere hidden but you don't know because there's no transparency or communication. 
Okay, so not enough transparency, and maybe pointing back for the rich portfolio, big size, customer is far away, so it's hard to see the bigger purpose, right? Yeah. And the purpose that's being communicated is not really the purpose of the company. Well, that's an interesting one. Because the leaders might believe in actually, for example, that, 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 that they only care about money, but they think that with their purpose they can uh, make people do more and, and they will get more money. Okay, cool. yeah. so the purpose is artificial, yeah. mm -hmm. made by marketing agents, somebody said. <laughs> Sounds good. I mean, our value proposition, our values are, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And nobody, okay, that's good. It's so artificial purpose. Anything else? Yeah, in our group, uh, you know, the question was what challenges, what uh, uh, corporate has in bringing big principles into action. I think one of the main issues we mentioned was um, is if it's not broken, why fix it? And people really don't see a, a reason for it. Yeah, so it goes a little back for the status quo mm -hmm. idea that I mean, it, it's working, it's uh, don't, don't fix it, it's, it's not, the, and culture is what it is, let it be. Right? Okay, final one for the purpose, then we move to the next box. Any more? Something? Yeah? It's difficult to find a from where? So a link for home task. Okay. Okay. So fine. So basically, so the purpose doesn't feel like I'm, I can contribute to it. Yeah. yeah. So so basically, it goes back a little bit for the size and the, maybe the pure the, the organizational size. It makes it hard to realize what's the purpose in my specific work. Oh, cool. I think we captured quite nicely what might be the challenges of bringing purpose in a bigger organization. Thank you. Next one, wholeness. Hmm, that's a bit more complicated. Can I be private myself in a, in a work? Would I like to be? And uh, what are the challenges? Okay, starting from here. Personalities are not really known. Okay, so, and then the challenge is? Uh, challenge is the wholeness. The wholeness, yeah, okay, so personality is known, so people know the. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, so uh, she was saying that, I mean, the personalities are not known. Okay, cool. So basically, I mean, so you don't know the private side of it. You just know the professional image. Yeah, so you don't really know your colleagues. Yeah, you, you, you don't know the colleagues. Right? Next one. Okay, so the spirit of internal competition, which is like um, being, being like one rule and not being like all of the time perfect and not knowing with you. I need to visit the Ebebas or show them all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, Exactly, so there's a, like a competition in most of big organizations which may be harsh and then you just want to show the good parts, yeah. like in your Facebook profile, right? <laughs> so actually I think that in some sense it's also happening in a private life. Uh, I think you have a comment. Uh, next one. Do you want to continue? Yeah. Uh, there is um, there are, there's more management culture than leadership culture in the companies. So people are still thinking about the things and not humans as much. Generalized yeah. that. Okay. So, so the people are there just to execute something, They're and the focus is more on <laughs> focus is more on the uh, outcome of assets or yes. ownership or something like that. Yes. Okay. So management culture based on the assets or something like that. Uh, was there somebody here? Uh, it feels very uncomfortable if somebody comes to tell you about your marital issues or whatever. Yeah. Or kind of like you your health or, or something, yeah. it's not something that we are familiar with. Yeah. So, yeah, so it feels uncomfortable for yourself. You don't want, you want to be working here. I don't want to deal with your like uh, marriage issues or your problems with your children. I mean, let's, let's <coughs> keep working, right? Yes. Okay, so it's actually for personal, yeah? Uh, you don't want to hear. Lack of empathy. Yeah, in a way. I mean, so, exactly. so supplementing that. So lack of empathy uh, because you're still working here, right? And competing. So don't come up with me. Uh, lack of empathy. And after you know that your boss has a rash in his butt, you can never <laughs> say it again. Okay, well, let's keep that. Right? <laughs> I, say, I don't think it's very common that people at all start thinking, looking at themselves and what's going on and what is that really drives me. So maybe 
maybe the first place is the organization. And it might bring up a lot of fears. Right. Actually the greater the okay. Yeah, so you think that the people in general actually don't know yeah. why they are, what, what's driving them, why they want to do something, what is, and, and you don't want to start in your professional community. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I think, go on, on their audience. Yeah. We're on topics. Yeah, so people don't know in general. Yeah. People want to find it. Yeah, good. Yep. Um, I think lots of companies also suffer from, I don't know, what's it in English, like lockering, sort of silos. silos. Yeah, not silos in that Box sense, but box, box. <laughs> <Yeah, box laughs> like, <laughs> like, like sort of generalizing that, or putting people into some sort of order that, I'm, uh, you know, that's be from accounting, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's accounting, and so that's that's my box. Right, and I could be, you know, good in ma managing and, you know, uh, customer service or whatever. Yeah. You know, so you don't really know the competency. I mean, oh. So, so basically, we don't we don't realize that. I mean, we, we have little stigmas. I mean, yeah, yeah. I used to work for service desk, so I'm a service desk operator. Yeah, I mean, and, and you're a manager, yeah. somebody's project manager. And not taking into account like personal development also. Right. So you're accounting, you know. Some from accounting and you yeah. So you were 50 years yeah. ago an accountant okay. when you joined, so yeah, you're so accountant. Right yeah. And I don't want to hear anything else, yeah, exactly. and I don't even expect you to be anything else. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a box system. And I don't sort of support your personal development. Yeah. Either. But would it be fun if you know the fear from accounting when he goes, home, when she goes home, she's a ninja. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yep, cool. Maybe the um, practices of promotion, uh, yeah. that you have an expert that you have then promoted to be the manager, and then yeah. they want to show their expertise, even as managers, um, yeah. therefore the micro yeah, so expert managers yeah. who haven't realized actually it's, it's others who need to yeah. be the experts yeah. now. Yeah? Yeah, I was going to continue on that point. <coughs> I think it's all about trust, so that there's mutual trust between the bosses and the employees, and how you can build on that trust and, and sort of empower people to, to be the best they can yeah. be. Um, and in organizations where the turnover is very fast, where people are coming in going out all the time, and you have training and people in, going, going uh, only spending six months or a few months there, or you know, one year, two years, and on average, it's difficult to establish that trust. Yeah, so there's a lack of trust, trust that is actually making it hard, basically, for the people to let others to decide, and there's a, maybe a culture of micromanagement because of that. Okay, and the final one for this. Uh, I think that also deals with uh, what we were discussing, is uh, losing the momentum. Yeah. Uh, it deals with the wholeness, purpose, peer. So why on earth I should do this if I lose my job? So right. That's where's my motivation? Yeah. Another thing is that uh, I think in big organizations you do have this uh, danger to have fancy uh, consultants coming and caring about all the change management, all this, that, and another. And then you see when you ask for one year, nothing happens. Mm. How do you pick up these people and say, okay, now we're going to do it? They don't trust you. So this time say, it's going to work. <laughs> right. But, yeah. And this will be a challenge. Yes. So how to make it, there was this question, does it come from top down or does it just get up? Yeah. And they have to be very, very careful. Yeah. So basically, well, how I understood it, that, that I mean, all the organizations have for years corporate, so let's say you have had 100 years corporate, it has been every single year of these 100 years trying to develop. And there has been different types of thoughts of empowerment and how people are our greatest asset and everything like that, and people just don't believe it anymore. Seriously. There's a cynicism on it. Is, is, did I get it right? They see, uh, everybody's seen it. I mean, there are too much BS and not enough changes. Yes. And it's not very easy to change a big organization. No. And especially by the people who never ever had a business responsibility themselves. So it does just consult and side and buy. So why these guys should be doing it better than me? Because we have been doing this for years. Yes. Yes. All right. Cool. Uh, if, if I one more uh, uh, related to that one uh, is are the beliefs sort of bringing the fixed mindset in the, instead of growth mindset that big corporations are slow, that ele elephants can't dance, they are inhuman. Mm -hmm. We believe it's so, and it cannot be otherwise. Good. Now I take the final one here, and then we continue. So there was one. Was something just here. A, a response to that. Um, consultants do people very laundry. That's what we get hired. <laughs> no, I'm speaking from personal experience. It's, yeah, I get that response. If there's no change, nothing is happening. Consultants get hired, and it's to cover people's asses at the top. So it's not like it should be around that like organization. Yeah. The organization, business organizations do exist for one single purpose. That's for their clients. If you work with Japanese corporations, I think for many years. So they are very focused on the client. And that's where they derive the whole motivation. Why be here? because the client wants to have a car, they want to have financial services, this, that, and another, and then you deduct your purpose from that value that you for a client. I mean, corporations are not social camps, putting stickers on the wall and, and trying to be very clever. No, 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 they exist there for the client, and they exist there for the owners. Thank Otherwise, you. there's no reason for them to exist. Sure, okay, cool. Sorry to for for the no, 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 but I mean, of course, I mean, the question about the self-organization, I mean, that, I think that felt more that, I mean, that's more about the purpose, the challenges in the purpose, than the challenges in self-organization and such. Okay, and let's not go for the consultant, not consultant debate, I mean, I have tons of jokes about consultants, so let's not go for that. Okay, cool. I think we got covered the challenges in corporate, so basically the purpose, I mean, which I think we've come back quite a lot of like a per, I mean, the culture and the transparency elements like this. Wholeness, actually, you don't want to hear about the others that much. One else. And the self organization, you don't want to make decisions because there's many to make those decisions. Let's move for the next column. So, what we could do? So, what are the best practices, the good ideas, some thoughts, how you could actually make it easier? So let's start from purpose. Any good ideas? Any best practices? Or were you stuck in as challenges only? Yeah. Together with 
values. So it's matching the company organization's values with the employee's values. It's more about matching. Yeah. So, so basically, so one of the methods is matching the values. Yeah. How do you do it? Are, are you chasing the people so they have the same values as the company, or are you chasing company values? Well, it depends on which side of the camp you're on. Yeah. Okay, cool. But anyway, matching the values in a way or another. Let's write it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would have a co con comment on those uh, values because the uh, leaders of this kind of organizations, when they're interviewed, they usually talk about not so much about the values, but they talk about, first of all, purpose, and then that people. The, the decision should come from within, so so they should think themselves. How can how can I? What is the best way in this situation to serve this purpose? Mm -hmm. And there is not so much about this, you know. They don't talk about so much about these values that are like that the company has these values, but but that they encourage more people to do their own. So am, am I understanding it right that I mean you need to set some kind of company purpose, right? And then yes. you need to let people to find out I mean how they can contribute yes. in that purpose. And maybe that's a one of less, so yes. maybe well, that's one of the methods. Instead of telling them I mean this is the way how you contribute, I mean let them to do it themselves. Did I get it right? Yeah. Cool. Other comments, findings, yes? Yeah? We talk about stories and especially success stories and spreading success stories and that show the pilots that have been ongoing and that have been able to achieve something. Yeah, cool. So basically, I mean, when you when you do something like I let people to find the purpose for themselves and if it's successful, then promoting it very heavily. I mean, it's promoting the success. Yeah, and especially also the practical experimentations, the tryouts that have been there. Yes. When we come to the next column, the idea is to and that was in there too. Okay, cool. So we can repeat it then. Uh, then. This actually works in any kind of change resistance case. So it's a, it's a method that where you work with the unseen dy dynamics like fear. So yeah. Work on those and, and okay, cool. those yeah. so, that are so obstacles behind the uh, Change. Okay, so obstacles behind the change which are not visible in a yes. way. For example, the fear that we yeah. the fear that we discussed earlier, or the competition yeah, in a so way. So you can kind of facilitate or have a <coughs> group coaching or something where you can discuss the fears. Okay, cool. So to so work on the unseen things. Yes. Yeah. So referring to what she said and what he said uh, is one of the fourteen guys. I guess it was. Um, well, I guess it was you, no, it was your colleague who said like, uh, yeah, I read something in our infra, uh, internal uh, system, something, but uh, I didn't. So it's, 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 it's a leadership management thing. It's, uh, it's, it's like more people and less infrastructure. So it's, it's a kind of, okay, I care. So uh, the how, how to ch share, uh, share this information, what we just achieved, learned, and uh, what we should do more of these experiments. So it wouldn't be in stuck in the old system of communication. You need to create also a system how to reach out and how to talk about that. So not only implementing the uh, lab system, also implement a system where you talk about lab. Okay, so you mean basically, right, so it can be like an internet, but it can also be like spreading the message to the managers and making sure they have a group discussion, something like that. Yeah, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't come, uh, it wouldn't feel like it's coming uh, top down. It, yeah. it would be like we feeling, and uh, and that in that we feeling, we encourage you to make some mistakes. Okay, so basically use like a wide communication channels so, okay. to Slack. deliver the purpose in a way, and, and, and make sure that the people feel it's it's part of the real like a daily basis. Right? Cool. More? Any thoughts how to set the purpose? Because now we are almost assuming the purpose is there and, and, and it's like a spread. Workshops. Workshops? Yep, so I mean, and with whom? Everybody. Everybody. Okay, so you take 10,000 people and you have a, like a nice yeah. get together. So you can have stakeholder ones, you can have employees, you can have different departments. It depends. I mean, that whole area is massive. Okay, so to summarize workshops. So workshops with a wide audience instead yeah. of a management team only, with I guess. Everyone involved. 
Yeah. Okay. Everybody involved with uh, way workshops here. Um, a little bit the same idea, but not with that worldwide audience. Um, I have staff in Japan who came from GE, and they're very good in Six Sigma. One of the tricks they used was the quarterly review. Everybody was sitting down and writing what I am doing, what I'm supposed to do, what I'm doing, what I deliver. And then people were reading it, and sometimes the bosses were reading what the guys were uh, telling they are doing. They're like, oh my goodness, you're not supposed to do this at all. And there, was, there were like black spots, there was no support. Somebody was expecting support from these and that guys, and they were not having this action on their agenda at all. Sometimes it sounds very trivial, but it's good to check what people are doing. Okay, cool. So basically, arranging a way to check what actually people do in, in real life, in the activities. And, and you can even arrange it in a way that I mean, basically, well, having a, quite a big company wide sessions do it, I mean, which is extensive. But okay, cool. And that goes for the purpose. So, purpose of the purpose. Cool. Yeah. Also, uh, meta advice. I think we're forgetting something. Like what is very important and I think vital for understanding other people and then seeing the whole in other people, uh, uh, sharing the stories are, I think the vital things there are uh, the skills in dialogue and teamwork. Everybody knows that how frustrating are bad workshops. And uh, after a bad, uh, bad experience, they don't come anymore. So facilitating skills, dialogue skills, and understanding and developing those skills, yeah. I and think are very important. And in which of these principles you think it goes? All of these? Or? All of these, uh, sort of. But finding the purpose, I, I think it uh, kind of there needs to be some dialogue going on, whether it's a uh, face-to-face or virtual or whatever. Yeah. So basically, in order to get these principles moving, there needs to be more dialogue. Okay. And in order to be more dialogue in a big corporate, you need to have skills for that. And that calls for facilitation, discussion, all these kind of very traditional skills that we maybe forget occasionally. Right? You're talking about empathy. Uh, well, empathy, it was mentioned earlier. I think it's empathy is probably yeah, one, one of the elements. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, let's move on. So, it was purpose. Anything specific for the wholeness? You know, hearing about the stories of uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> we can, uh, yeah. Coaching, because, you know, like, for example, the point that was mentioned that she doesn't necessarily want to hear someone else's yeah. personal stuff, but to have a coach that could work with people individually, kind of like a company counselor. Okay. And coaching them to learn that you should care or, um, or coaching more in terms of personal coaching, understanding the personal drivers, mm -hmm. drivers of the individuals, perhaps before you know maybe not everyone wants to know like, everyone's business. Yeah. So just having someone who's like a mediator first who has that. Is. Okay, Knows cool. Everyone. Yeah. So having some kind of bit more professional mediating that yeah. kind of discussions you need. Yep. Yeah. Um, switching from from like a stick. Um, Set titles to have set, uh, different roles. Mm -hmm. Might be again be a from accountant. Might be might want to lead a charity project, for example, yeah. in the company. Yeah, I think that's an interesting one. I mean, titles because they actually in a corporate life they stigmatize you. They make the box. So you know, regarding <coughs> the titles might be actually quite a good practical tip. Yeah. yeah this goes to the same direction. Uh, the issue of language. Yeah. Uh, Michael, un under wholeness. Um, just an example, must we battles change resistance? Yeah. There is a theory according to which change resistance is a rhetorical category used by change agents about those people who don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> <not> very much. <laughs> well, but so it's about language. Must we battles KPIs, success stories, yeah. performance? This is all, um, you know, I say it in this group now, this is all part of Corporate bullshit bingo, yeah. which is fine. But must win battle, we talk about the term must win battle. Mm. Who created that battle? Mm. How many of us want to be in the front row of a battle? Mm. Uh, and what is the image that that language is creating, especially for the wholeness of the people who are actually depending on that job? You know, they they have their mortgages, they have their kids, their families, their yeah. everything to support. It's it's not the very not for everybody, it's not very yeah. encouraging. That's good. And cut on that. I think it's a good one. Language, I mean, maybe a bit fierce. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I would comment on that language also. I, I think that's a really good point. And, 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 and what, what we're talking, uh, 
how, how we talk about each other. Are we are we like uh, yeah? Are we mani managers or or, or or are we college college colleagues, for example? Mm -hmm. and, and that's good. That's so, a really so language in hierarchies. I mean, yeah, yeah, colleague, yeah, my manager, yeah. my subordinate. I mean, my team, my team leader. I mean, yeah, and how we categorize others has changed the system for you know those others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you had a comment. Yep. Yeah. So, that's, um, also, a good method is, is um, increasing the humor, which we yeah. noticed here, so it's, so more it fun. changes the mindset when you have a little bit of jokes and so on. Yeah, it's a, it's a more fun, more jokes, I mean, yeah. I mean, that easily brings the personality yeah. and on, on the paper and all that. Cool, then we have time for one more. Yeah. I think people are curious. So finding basically curious people, yeah, yeah. Curious people, yeah. yeah. in an organization to make, make, make things like, uh, yeah, exactly. So if you're curious, <laughs> then basically, I mean, you may be asking, so oh, how's your kids and family, or how are things, and, and that way. So raising up curiosity, yeah, that's interesting. Let's try it down. Okay, cool. That was about the wholeness. Let's move on to the next one. So self-organization. So how to tackle with this challenge so far? I don't want to make decisions. It's too risky. Or oh, well, our culture says that I mean, my boss will make this decision. That's a micromanagement or whatever. Yep. Uh, connecting with people's inner motivation, so for instance in recruitment, um, <coughs> they're the person who has a real right to learn about yep. something that, so that this personal interest is really in line with the purpose of the job, so that yeah. they will then themselves find ways to do Okay, yeah, so basically a record, find the right people, those who have like a try to actually self-organize themselves, yeah. because that's a better. Yeah. Well, you can't do that unless you have a culture. Otherwise, you're yeah, stuck with being push and pull situation. Yeah, you have to have a conscious decision in a recruitment situation who you choose. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it's, it's a great, yeah. They they choose you. Yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's a good point about the culture, definitely. So I mean, recruiting it's one thing, but of course, I mean, if the culture doesn't allow that kind of decision, it's not going to work. Other comments? Yeah. I like process sprints. Okay. And you said specifically process. I <laughs> Process sprint. Okay. So piloting an idea, piloting a process. It's yeah. a sprint. It's not forever. It's for a couple of weeks. It's also iterative. It's yeah. Change. Yeah. So basically, adapt to this kind of agile, agile models and, and you know, sprint things. I mean, not only in approaches, but also maybe I mean testing and proof of concept things and processes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, oh, no, no, so good. Many. Okay. Let's start. Um, create more transparency so that people have the information and data to use decision making and really like uh, really ask yourself is this really so secret? Yeah. Do you really need to keep yourself like isolated? Yeah that's a good one. So it's hard to make decisions if you yeah. don't know. Yeah. Okay cool. So having this kind of a like uh, uh, more transparency, I mean let, let's be able <laughs> to make more sensible decisions. Uh, good. Here. Okay, uh, some leap of faith actions like removing old structures even without knowing what's the replacement in, in some context. If it's small, it has to be small, but uh, that we don't have a plan what to do next, but we just remove, let go of the past and then believe that we will find something. Okay, cool. So basically, I mean, taking a very brave step. I mean, you know, saying that we don't have marketing function anymore. <laughs> Just try to reorganize, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I, I would do it in, in another way. A leap of faith. So basically, actually, making very brave morning. I think you go first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought there were still the challenges, but I did actually need, like moving the metrics. So, so I think like one of the big problems is that a lot of the times the management or leadership is thinks that other people can't do things. Well, as in fact, it's not the management or leadership letting go of the power. Yeah. So it's it's actually to look at you know when do I use the handbrake when it's not meant meant to do so uh, if you're in a leadership or management role. Yeah. So training the training the managers. Right. So actually, when to break them. Like not just look at how you they do the things, but yeah. actually how do I do the things and in the relationship with the others because. <coughs> yeah. Good. So basically, you next. It's, it's coming back to the information and, and pool sort. I mean, you need to have a very good knowledge what the organization is doing. And pool sort would have been completely impossible without modern communication. Mm -hmm. It comes to the your degree of liberty of doing something. You cannot really invent a completely new way of uh, running a power stations or distribute uh, uh, 
forward, you do have some expectations. Mm -hmm. If you go to uh, elderly people, their client is very heavily regulated what actually happens there. Mm -hmm. You have a medication, you have this, that, or another. So it's not only that we have a nice cup of coffee and I'm mm -hmm. over my summer self this afternoon and now you have to do something that one is required. Mm -hmm. Having said all that, I mean, you can do it in a fun way, and there are examples like Woodstock and like Nebora in Finland, which has succeeded in that. But it requires just bread and butter, communication, we record what we did with the client, we record what kind of hours, we're going to put that in our billing system, so forth, so on. These are businesses. Yes, so going back for a little bit earlier, so there was this transparency thing, and then there was a question about the training people for very basic things like the communication, the facilitation, and the discussion. And making sure it, it is basically his communication, it's not like an anarchistic as such. Uh, uh, I think it was before you. Yeah, I, I have in mind this uh, story that the owner of AES uh, told how they transformed, uh, why, why they began transforming this, this, uh, uh, the, the, this 27,000. It wasn't that big then, but uh, they, he, he, there was. One, one day there was uh, uh, this uh, operator who saw that, that the machine wasn't uh, working. Uh, and then there was something weird with the machine. So he went to get his boss to, to, and, uh, to ask him if, if, if he would, uh, could shut it down. But in, in the meantime, the machine blew up. So if he would have been there, uh, he would have died. But he fortunately didn't. But then he just, this CEO, this owner started thinking that, that this cannot be, this just cannot go on anymore, that people uh, cannot do their own decisions. So, so most times those leaders, they just realize that this cannot go on, but they don't really have the solutions for how to go on. But more like invite people to be part of the yeah. solution. So there's basically some big thing happening which yeah. where, what which gets people to realize that I mean there's too much like uh, you know distance between the decision making and the actual activity in a way. Good. Final one, you see. Okay there was nice in a idea in the group that we could use rules yeah. and policies for this, but when we go from complicated environment uh, to complex environments, then the rules are not anymore the constraining and limiting limit <coughs> rules, but they are enabling rules. Yeah. So the rules are there for creating the safe space and psychological yeah. safety and rules for self-organizing. Yeah, that's a good one. So rules for enablement. Yes. Yeah. Making sure people are, I mean, you know, not afraid to make those decisions, for example, but they really have a that they like can make it. That's good. Okay, you can add yeah, one. Just to yeah. that, that, for example, in practice, what could be uh, allowing and encouraging managers not to do the decisions, hmm? not to do the to decisions. force the decision down. Mm -hmm. But rather, uh, like, uh, yeah. make them together with the team. Yeah, so positive roles, rules of enablement. That was good. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to move on. So now uh, we spoke about the challenges. <coughs> we spoke about the methods. Okay, earlier you heard about what Fortum is trying to do here, about the agility and speed and everything like that. And also there was a couple of questions. So let's come up with some ideas, what they could do. I think there has been some practicalities are discussed already, but I mean, let's, let's, let's face them up. So, and maybe it's good if you, if you can point a little bit at purpose, so wholeness, and self-organization. Yep, starting from here. Yeah, this goes to the purpose that purpose. Uh, shock, shock treatment, that uh, empathizing uh, with the environment, for example, get, getting uh, everybody to visit some nature hazard catastrophes or areas. What's happening if we do things wrong? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Right. <laughs> yeah. So basically, uh, that's a, you know, Fukushima visit for, <laughs> for, for, for right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So get the empathy out of there. Okay, what, what may turn out if we do not things properly, right? Very short one. Uh, more? We heard from the four two people in our group that we're saying spread existing good success story. There's not enough information right now about what has been what's been done so far. Yeah? Okay, cool. So basically just in a very practical terms, make sure the communication is working, you're promoting success. I mean bring me taking those success stories where something wrong the agility or self organization has been working and make them pulled out. Yeah it is <coughs> must be bad yeah. there's been good things going on but 
and then the, the, the means of publication have so far been very limited. Was it specifically for some of these? Men? No, no. Okay, so in general, yep. Yeah, reading on that maybe I also relate to wholeness of also communicating about the ins uh, like insecurities and uncertainties that we haven't still figured out. So it's not just like succeeding and uh, mm -hmm. it's because it's it's well it's I suppose it's it's not totally clear uh, what, what you're doing and uh, what what you're doing and, and there are some like mistakes and uh, challenges also. So we we also open about those. So it's building the whole so it's not just like trying succeeding and succeeding everybody else is succeeding. We are struggling actually well, I am struggling. And there is trouble also yeah. that's fine. And we will be like well, yeah. learning and, and finding ways. So transparency yeah. basically in, yeah, in you know. order to increase the yeah. wholeness <laughs> and also communicating openly about the struggles. Yeah. That's something that we didn't like figure out yet. Okay, and maybe lessons yeah. learned, yeah. elements like that, yeah. all of that. So okay, so yeah. more communication, yeah. more transparently. I mean, about the goods and bads, and making sure things are happening in that sense. Uh, yeah. Did you have to do that. Uh, okay. Organize a failure festival. <laughs> <laughs> Has somebody done that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we've done it in my organization. <coughs> okay. But, um, so, so you already. I work for Plan International. It's a large uh, INGO, mm -hmm. international non-governmental organization. So every year we organize a failure festival where people, <laughs> top managers, all the way to the uh, less less senior people, come come on the. It's like almost like um, you know, like um, stand up. Uh, my but my best fail. Yeah, my best fail, and they come <laughs> as as themselves, and then they explain how they what they learned about it. And we always do it during slush. Yeah. Like well, that sounds pretty powerful. I mean, yeah. because if you get that kind of culture up and running, people should yeah. be much more open for the homeless because they see that I'm everybody are failing and it's fine. Yeah. It's learning from it. Uh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was building on the previous answer just on top of that, that, that those leaders, as a leader, to come, come, be, be really uh, like whole in front of people and be, be your not so perfect self, but also so your maybe some fra fragilities or, or, or weak sides and, and, and be honest. <coughs> so, maybe, so training managers should be more open and whole? Yeah, and I, I think it has to come from more like honest place, and yeah. just training how you can, you know, <laughs> uh, seem like you're like you're <laughs> like open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Really, be honest and, and reflect what you yeah. Maybe this mediation person that was pointed out earlier could be a, one of the hikers of making that kind of things happen. There was somebody here, uh, yeah. And then, then um, you have to pay attention to recruiting. Mm -hmm. You might want to uh, recruit the people who are <coughs> the type of persons who want to, to be more self managed and not the yeah. ones that go and ask their wants first. Yeah. And yeah, then that's interesting, the recruitment, I think, because I mean, of course, I mean, you can really get very different type of personalities in, and if that is the one thing you really are putting in action, I mean, you should get actually some kind of self organized elements to happen, most likely. Yeah? Just a point, a little bit back to those managers uh, yeah. you mentioned before is that don't lose that momentum. That's yeah. the worst thing you can do. You come up with some promises, some ideas, people do expect something to happen, you don't walk that talk. People disappoint. You will get that never back on board again. Yeah. Yeah. So momentum. And I guess that goes back a little bit for the what we have been speaking earlier about promoting success. Just because I mean, because you're pro when, when you have the momentum, when you are promoting the, even the smallest of the successes, it looks for the people things are happening at this. Just promote things you are able to fulfill. Yeah. Okay, the rest. Yeah, but basically we spoke about this promoting success, so promoting things that have happened. Yeah, that's the part where I was criticizing. Yeah. <laughs> about I'll give you the good thing. That's good. Just that, walk that talk, yeah. and a big organization like this, if people are okay, we're going to change the world, and they're sitting on their asses for one year, nothing happens. Yeah. So keeping up the momentum and the speed, yeah. and this kind of a like... Uh, I don't see that it's happening here, but this is a bit dangerous. Yeah. We need to and if I'm getting tried also about this, maybe being very clear that you don't over promise what you can deliver in a way, right? Okay, uh, more ideas, thoughts, thoughts? Yeah. Um, I think we had one quite nice idea, I don't know, maybe not too much, but um, uh, kind of relative to the failure day, we, we talked about anarchy day. 
Okay. Um, and uh, we talked about the, the kind of like concept that you would uh, facilitate the discussion that what would you do if you could start everything uh, and kind of um, helping people to maybe to increase the internal communication and this kind of concept would maybe um, um, help to have the discussion like, oh, I didn't know that you, can, you don't actually have the power to decide that. Why didn't you say to me that, you know, are you waiting for my decision on that one? Mm -hmm. And kind of like, you know, having that kind of a kind of fun way of, of playing around and, and uh, increasing the internal communication, the, the, uh, go, the process towards autonomous decisions. Yeah, yeah. So maybe there should be some kind of like a corporate, I mean, level <laughs> method to run that kind of anarchy day or day of failure or whatever. And then you would make sure that I mean, these are happening in a team, or groups, or units, or whatever. And that starts actually to develop uh, this consciousness about I mean, how I can make decisions. Erase, erase fear is basically what you're looking for. Erase a fear so you can try stuff, and uh, I can, we can make a decision, and. Uh, we can start the process uh, and give it, up, give it a damn if it goes somewhere or not. Because uh, it might stick and then we build on that. So we throw out something in the startup uh, kind of stuff and then we treat that. Because uh, if you look at them, any big corporations, they do these massive R&Ds. And when they put them in the market, they always tweak that. 2020, 2020s, and then they have to, happens to be uh, be more in shareholder uh, focus than uh, customer focus. And then we have a great uh, Japanese failure called Sunny. Uh, it was a massive, massive failure uh, when they lose traction on, uh, through Six Sigma. So you need to go somewhere and deliver something goes through. And then if it doesn't go through, you started something and say, hey, it's fine. We failed here, but now we're going to learn on a fun way what we next time won't do, and then we try again and iterate on that. On, and yes, cool. on. So, so basically, fear, 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 <laughs> it's the fear and uh, threshold is so low as possible to start new things. Okay, so speaking about those things, what we have been speaking about, so basically, iteration of the sprinting processes, I mean, getting down the fear, I mean, the fail, days of failure, and so that it's okay to basically do things and fail location. Actually, that's what you need to do. Good. Uh, any brilliant data ideas more? Experiment. <laughs> okay, then we're going to close this session. Thank you. One, one last thing for Porto, because this was said by the Porto people. Okay. More info on key organizing and gather people together for that. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, out of what's happening next. So I, I, we're collecting now these, thank you very much. We got quite a nice notes here, plus on top of that there's a recording. Then I'm actually making all those notes that you made. This is great, and then we are going to make a summary out of this. And the main purpose is basically to try to create some kind of a library of, you know, typical challenges, typical best practices, how you can actually bring Teal into corporate, and we are sharing that for, I mean, in, in Teal Swabi community. That's that's what we do. So thank you very much for the workshop. Uh, yeah, and then we are heading to closing words. Yeah, I add a few words here, and if anyone wants to say something, no, okay, then it's just my... Yeah, just a moment. I think this uh, was a very interesting discussion. I think the uh, target of this hour between Pato and the is uh, very common. We just want to find a way to reach this, this kind of uh, organization where everybody is happy and uh, is flexible and changes are continuous and such. But if, if this discussion will got your interest against Teal, you can go to this teal.suomi.fi address and learn more. And there is also Facebook, uh, is it group or mm -hmm. group? Group, yeah, I'm always confused with this Facebook thing, but, but you can join also that. And uh, if somebody is using Slack, you can go also there. It may be needs a bit more effort, but anyway, it's good that you know that there's also a Slack group where there's lots of discussion. And then there is, uh, in the end of, end of this month, there is an open space event in Lekpavara where you can participate and you can get more information from this. It's a four o'clock. Four o'clock, okay. From this address, the Sonia thing. <coughs> so, well, Maybe a word about the last one. So, so well, this is very much a self-organizing community, right? So we are like a 
I guess we were 400 people in the, in the Facebook group when I last checked, so there's quite a lot in Slack, like 100 people from different type of backgrounds, so everybody had their own whatever they do, and then they're bringing the wholeness in the, in the, so the community as one. But we also are actually trying to, uh, going to launch a cooperative, just to give a bit more legal body for the operation, and I mean, basically the papers are ready and others, so we, and we have been signing those, so we're going to launch it in a couple of weeks. And that's also one way of actually making it sure we keep up the momentum in a way and are able to arrange these kind of events and others. So that's a one word, but more for India's for me. Okay, so uh, uh, really fast, uh, some etymology uh, behind the word teal in the storytelling. Teal, etymology. It's, uh, it's teal is basically a color and it's coming from this book which was written about the whole movement of teal and the idea is that I mean they, they have been giving basically a column called name for different type of a, like a evolutionary phase of organization. There's like a yellow and there's a orange and there's a amber and teal and I'm missing a green. And it's purely just a column, nothing else. It's just to make it easier than speaking about all these three principles. And it has three spiral and it's, so it's a whole theory about evolution. Good. Yeah, but uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> and also, also, I would like to say about this event. So this event was fully self-organized. There was no organizer or anything, and there have been many people uh, who have put in their input who are not even here. And 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 uh, it started many months ago, but maybe two months ago, this organizing. And I would like to thank everyone who has been a part of this organizing. Good. So big applause yeah. for everybody here. And now we also want to continue discussion. We can go, can go to this, our restaurant for lunch. But if, if you don't have time, then thank you very much. The lunch is paid yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you.